Okey, kalau kita cakap pasal industri jeans di Malaysia ini satu ya, industri yang sangat besar. Bukan saja di Malaysia, malah di Southeast Asia ini sebenarnya, di Asia Pasifik ini. Dan hari ini saya bertuah kerana hari ini adalah pembukaan uh, untuk uh, Jalan Malibas, uh, butik mereka di KLCC ini, antara yang terbesar. Kalau, kalau kita melihat uh, bergerak keharapan dan juga apa sasaran mereka untuk mencapai uh, nilai uh, revenue uh, $10 bilion. Uh, ini turut melibatkan pasaran Malaysia yang dianggap begitu besar. Dan juga kita ingin mengetahui kenapa Malaysia ini pasaran besar, apakah kelebihannya dan juga ke, uh, bergerak ke hadapan dan untuk rantau ini dari segi pasaran jeans ini saya nak bersama dengan uh, orang kuat untuk Levi's dia sendiri iaitu Nuhal Subsaiman, uh, Levi's Managing Director of East Asia Pacific joining us uh, this morning. Uh, Nuhal, thank you so much for joining us. Um, let's talk about, uh, let's start off with the strategy and vision of expansion for uh, Levi's itself. Um, you know, you has been operating larger and more elevated stores across Asia. Currently, uh, how does Malaysia fit into this strategy, and also what unique opportunities does uh, Malaysian market has to offer? Okay. Um, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, as you probably have uh, read in the press, you know, it's our ambition to be a ten billion dollar company. Yes. Our international markets uh, will be a huge part of that, and Malaysia fits into into that market section. That's one. Mm -hmm. Two, uh, part of the strategy to, to grow towards this $10 billion ambition is our DTC first strategy. Um, and again, this is where this store fits in. So in, in, in our cluster, East Asia Pacific, and in particular in Malaysia, we're already far ahead of that strategy. In Southeast Asia, we're probably close to a 90% uh, DTC business. Right. Um, and for the big part of the, the last decade, a lot of that has got to do with expansion and opening mm a lot of stores. So in Southeast Asia and in Malaysia, we have a lot of stores. But the next phase and what this store is all about is about uh, more quality of doors. So what you see here in this store, we've doubled the footprint. You know, this is now our largest store in Southeast Asia, close to 400 square meters, 4,000 square feet. Um, and that is really to, to be able to express ourselves as a true denim lifestyle brand. Mm. You know, Levi's is probably known as a, a men's US bottoms business where if you look in this store, you'll find a lot of tops, a lot of women's product, and, and we're just able to, with the space that we are now available, uh, provide that denim lifestyle assortment and really a much elevated uh, shopping experience for consumers. Yeah. Take us through about the journey of uh, achieving this $10 billion, uh, uh, $10 billion sales. Uh, what's the demand like for this, uh, demand like for this uh, region and Malaysia especially? Well, we're very fortunate here in Malaysia. It's probably one of the countries where we have the highest brand equity. Mm. When we do our brand, brand health studies, we score very high in Malaysia specifically. Malaysia is, uh, Levi's is the number one brand for denim in Malaysia. Okay. Um, demand has always been extremely high. And hence, we find that right now with the trend shifting towards more casual and more baggier fits, uh, I think we've got a, a strong play there. And also, uh, you know, when you when you think about Levi's being at the center of culture for so many years, uh, right now we feel there's a moment within the music industry. You'll remember Beyonce a couple of months back yep. uh, calling out Levi's in one of her songs, mm -hmm. or actually naming one of her songs. And so, so we feel there's a lot of momentum in the denim industry. And and again, this store is really about really leveraging that that opportunity. Mm. And I want to ask uh, Nohal, uh, how is Levi's adapting to its uh, product offerings uh, and also market uh, marketing strategies to cater to different consumer preferences uh, across the region, especially in Malaysia? Okay. Um, I think one of the, the, the unique aspects of Southeast Asia is the weather. Yes. And so from a, from a product technology and innovation perspective, we have a range that we call Performance Cool. Right. This, this is product that have uh, moisture wicking technology mm. that really allows the consumer to not really experience the heat yeah. or cool their bodies down. So I think that's a, quite a unique one. Um, we will evolve that into the coming season into more lightweight fa fabrics, which you already see in this store. So I think those are areas where we uniquely respond to the consumer in, in Southeast Asia. Right. Then we're also, from a marketing perspective to your question, we have our Ramadan campaign mm -hmm. that is very unique to, to Malaysia and Indonesia that we execute in market, which, mm -hmm. which are all things that I think the, 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 we take the global brand and leverage that to the local, to the local needs. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned about a little bit about DTC just now, right? Uh, DTC is direct to consumer uh, approach. Um, tell us more about this strategy and how uh, basically uh, uh, this strategy been received in Malaysia, and, of, uh, and, uh, and also the challenges you face in terms of implementing this strategy uh, in this uh, market. 
Yeah, I mean, we believe that where we manage our own brand, where we have the relationship direct with the consumer, we do very well. We've done that in Malaysia for a number of years now. Yes. Uh, we have decided to really dominate here in the Klang Valley. Mm -hmm. So all of most of the stores in this in this area we own, but we also have very strong partners in the other provinces. And mm -hmm. so, so, so the strategy really is about owning the con the relationship with the consumer. You'll also see in this store there's a tailor shop. Mm -hmm. That allows us to really provide a personalized experience to the consumer where we can customize their, their products that they buy, we can tailor and alter it for, the, for them, and we can also create unique uh, features for, for them in the product. So that's another element of providing that, that personalized service. Mm. Uh, the, the, for me, uh, when I do shopping uh, jeans and uh, denim, I have to go to the physical store because I have to touch the jeans, yeah. I have to see the jeans. Yeah. But a lot of people, you know, just go to e-commerce and online and then shop their jeans and all that. But in terms of our Levi's, how do you cope with that? What are the kind of the strategy that you put in place for e-commerce? Yeah, e of course, you know, um, I think the word is omni-channel these days, yes. right? We know consumers, there's different type of consumers. They, they, they search online and they come to the store to buy. Sometimes um. they come into the store to, to look and feel and get their size and then they buy online. So we need to mm. provide both services, correct? So it's a very complementing omni-channel, truly omni-channel experience. We've just recently upgraded our, our e-commerce platform right. uh, to provide a more, uh, I guess, a more, um, again, elevated uh, experience to the consumer online. And then together with our stores that are starting to look like this, um, you know, we, we believe we can provide a full elevated omni-channel experience. Right. Let's talk about the competition because the name uh, market in Malaysia is quite, uh, it's quite huge in terms of uh, the offerings in the, uh, in the market. How does uh, Levi's plan to differentiate itself in terms of product offerings in the market and, and, and still stand proud in terms of the, the brand that you have built uh, for many, many years in Malaysia? Yeah. Um, I think you mentioned it there, right, many, many years. So yeah. one of the core strengths of Levi is heritage. Right. and the other one is quality. So that's a strong two pillars that we differentiate ourselves on. You will find here in the store we have our Levi's Vintage Collection. Mm -hmm. now what this product's um, assortment is, is a um, Levi's timeline. So since the early 30s all the way through, we have Levi's uh, Vintage Collection that's replicas of the old uh, jeans we used to make over this period of time. Yeah. We feel that this, well, we see that this um, part of the collection is one of our fastest growing um, assortments and so consumers are telling us that they're still voting for for heritage yeah and the other one is quality right uh, when we think about today's fast fashion uh, we're the opposite of that mm. we believe that uh, buy better quality and wear it longer yeah. I think that is our our um, commitment to, to sustainability and also our op consumers opportunity to be to to the planet by wearing a product that's that's of better quality right um, tell us more about the emerging consumer trends that you see uh, currently and moving forward uh, in, uh, in Malaysia especially. Well, the biggest trend, as I said earlier, is what we see the shift from more of the uh, taper and slim legs right. to the more baggier and looser <laughs> legs. And that's, by the way, true for men and women. Um, so we saw a huge shift uh, 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 in that trend from literally last year to this. And, and, and as you'll see in this store, there'll be, there's a lot of baggy and yeah. loose fits around. And that, I think, is a huge opportunity for us to, to provide that consumer an opportunity to buy a new pair of jeans. So I think that is probably one of the biggest uh, shifts. And as I said earlier, being at the center of culture, there's a lot of denim uh, news in the music business, in, in K-pop. You see a lot of uh, um, influencers talking about denim. So I think we have, we're going through a real pivotal moment uh, in denim. And I think Levi's is, is absolutely perfectly positioned to take take uh, take that opportunity. Yeah. Let's talk about that. My, my final question. So let's talk about the sustainability because Levi's has a strong commitment for sustainability. Can you share with us some of the key sustainability uh, initiatives uh, uh, being taken, uh, implemented in Malaysia for, uh, from Levi's? Yeah, I think I think the fundam fundamental uh, part of um, of sustainability for a brand of Levi's is the aspect of quality. Right. Right. We, 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 as we, as I said to you, we, we, um, our motto is buy better, wear longer. Right. Yes. So, so that is, that is, um, buy fewer pairs, buy better quality. That's, that's one piece of it. Um, we also try to educate our consumers in terms of water usage. That's actually right. one of the, the biggest factor when it comes to sustainability is when the consumer takes the product home, 
and they use it in, in their house and they wash their product, the jeans every day, that's a huge drain on the water um, consumption in, on the planet. And so we try to tell people, you know, you don't have to wash your jeans. If you have every a good quality pair of jeans, you don't have to wash it every day. Yeah. There's other ways to take care of, of, of your, your jeans and, and that way take care of the planet. Johal, thank you so much for joining us thank uh, you so much. And, and, and all the best for Levi's, especially for Malaysian market and also Southeast Asian market. Uh, itu adalah berkaitan dengan pasaran di uh, Malaysia ini. It's very interesting kalau siapa yang belum sampai ke store ini, uh, di, di branch ini, uh, di KLCC ini, dia, dia makin besar. Kalau sampai sebenarnya dia punya kecil, dia sekarang dah besar. So, interesting to, to know uh, berapa besarnya the name uh, market ini di Malaysia dan juga bergerak ke hadapan dan sustainability journey itu sendiri. Okey, sekian saja uh, laporan saya untuk uh, Niaga Awani.